29 minutes on to 7 o'clock. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. How do you do? Being thankful on a good looking Friday morn. Coming to look at it, you know, coming to think of it. Didn't necessarily have to be here this morning. I could have been gone. You too. But we're here. We might not be all well, but we're alive. Yep. Thank you. Just say thanks this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you for life. Uh huh. Want to reach out and say good morning to the folks on the Sister Isles of Carrier, Ku and PD March, and a good morning, good morning. Didin, good morning to you. Kim the King Mills, good morning. Yeah. Thank you. My partner Neil, what's up, bro? Thank you. Patrick Kajo, good morning. Thank you. Gila Key, good morning. Well, not nah, key anymore, man. Nah. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. Morning to the hussy. Jonah. Shondell and Cheryl, good morning. Uh huh. Lovely, you know what time it is. It's time for our quiz this morning. Yeah, the Hills and Valley Health Quiz. During the week, I give you a health tip, and at the end of the week, or uh, Friday, I give you the quiz. And you answer, and you can win yourself a fabulous prize. Now, the question this morning is, it is, rec- is it recommended to use rice treatment to help heal workout injuries. What does the acronym RICE, that's R-I-C-E, what does that acronym mean? Let me ask the question again. It is recommended to use RICE treatment to help heal workout injuries. What does the acronym RICE mean? Let's head on to the telephone line. Good morning, caller. Okay, let's do this again and say good good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Yeah. Are you calling for the program? Yes, yes. Okay, do you think you have the correct answer for me? I think so. Okay, give it your best shot. Okay, rice to keep your injury from getting worse. Uh huh. Rest your in the injury. Uh huh, rest, yes. I. Uh huh. The injury from swelling, bleeding, and uh, inflammation. Uh huh. What the eye for? Uh, <laughs> inflammation. No, no. Inflammation. Eyes. The injury. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So that's R apply, and I. C. Yes. Apply compression bandage to minimize swelling. Uh huh. Elevate and the injury, if possible, from swelling to to reduce swelling. Uh huh. Wow. Where are you calling from, partners? I'm not partners now. I need with a big voice. Okay. Well, you're a partner still. <laughs> <laughs> your partner, partner doesn't have a gender with it. You're a partner. When, when I go to a party, my partner is a lady. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. For some reason, I find I know that voice. Is that true? I just find... <laughs> Every morning I can I say good morning to you and you see the from Labory. Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> okay, here what? Stay on the line. I'm gonna take your particulars of the air, okay? Don't you go. No, S- right. Stay, stay right there.
Lovely. Let's say a very special good morning to my good friend, Sylvina Charles of Library in St. George. She is the winner this morning. She is correct. She hit it right on the head. Yeah. Man, you people listen and you take notes, man. That's good. That You know, I'm impressed. I, I'm honestly impressed. Congratulations to you. You will be contacted so that your, you know, the arrangement uh, can be made so that you can um, collect your prize. All right, it's 23 minutes on to 7 o'clock, saying good morning to all the wonderful bus drivers and conductors of the nation. Again, I want to make a, a special appeal, especially to those uh, bus drivers traveling the St. David's route, you know. Um, please, drive carefully, you know. I'm seeing too many markings on the road. And it's not like you're the only one who's, you know, might be driving reckless or careless or whatever, but... I just want to be focusing on the bus drivers, the St. David, especially St. David's bus drivers this morning. All right? Be careful on the road. Drive carefully. Saying good morning to Mary E. Banks, Eulian Alexander, Joyous James, good morning. Yes, Catherine Phillips says good morning. Grenada, good morning. Innocent Eulian says good morning. Gordon, good morning to everyone. Blessings for a fantastic Friday. Have a great day and a wonderful weekend, everyone. Eulian. Stay blessed too, right? Yolan Swan says, good morning to you, Mr. Joseph. Good morning to one and all. Blessings. Happy Friday. Michelle Bernard, good morning. Mildred Smith, my people, good morning. Mr. Gordon, thank God for life. Yes, Mr. Innocent, let us continue giving thanks, of course. All right? Uh-huh. Sharon Bartholomew. Okay, Sharon Bartholomew is, is here. And Sharon says... Good morning. Are uh, you all all the way from Northern Virginia? Mm -hmm. Lydia Cameron says, good morning. Blessed Friday morning, Innocent and the entire Spice Island. It's shy Princess Felix. Good morning, Mr. Gordon. If you're not... Uh, Okay, if you're not taking part in King of the Grill, can you vend outside? I want to know, not because I want to go make a dollar. Okay, I do not know much about the vending arrangements. I will find out and um, let you know. All right, saying birthday greetings uh, to uh, Sister Janet out there in... Uh, Maryland, you got greetings coming from Kitty Cat, Alwyn, and Brenda. All right, okay, so Janet, all the way in Maryland, it's your birthday today. Happy birthday to you! It's coming from Alwyn, uh, Brenda, and Kitty Cat, all the way in Bacolet in Grenada. Okay, Magdalene Andrew, good morning to Grenada and the Sister Island. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Let's see what's happening with the program this morning. It's 20 minutes on two. It's time for the word of the day. And the word of the day today, it is a noun. It is a naming word. And that word is surfeit. Surfeit. And it is spelled S-U-R-F-E-I-T. S. -U -R -F -E -I -T. U-R-F-E-I-T, surfeit, and it is a formal word that refers to an amount or supply that is too much or more than you need. It is synonymous with the word excess. Yep. Wish I had a surfeit of cash, man. <laughs> Good morning, Auntie Winifred Hancock out there in Castine. Good morning to the whole of Castine and surrounding areas. Yep, yep, yep. Here's how we can use that word in a sentence. The organization ended up with a surfeit of uh, volunteers who simply got in each other's way. Here are too many of them. Excess. Nice. Nice. So that's the word of the day today. Remember it. Write it down. Learn to spell it. Learn to pronounce it. Learn to use it in your writing and in your speech. Nice. Saying good morning to Nadisha and the folks in Cafe, the Homes, uh, Papa Jerry, um, yeah, the folks in Crochu. 
Jones Supermarket, good morning, good morning, Mini Martin Bar, good morning to you all. Uh, the Crochet Service Station, Mr. McQueen, good morning to you. Uh, good morning to the McQueens out there in Pedmota. I just realized that um, someone from the family there has passed on. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My partner, the truckman, with a little, you know, Mini Mart downstairs. Good morning, bro. Good morning to the shop next door as well. Yep, yep, yep. Good morning to the Niles of Spice Isle Restaurant in a Wester Hall. Good morning. How do you do? Good morning, good morning. I did not forget you this morning, all right? Nice. It's always on my mind to say morning. However, it's time for the thought of the day, and it says, Challenges are what make life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. I always ask that. Sometimes, you know, when you go through your problems and your struggles, you wonder, why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? Why? Why? But could you imagine what a life would be without challenges? It might just be dull. Overcoming a challenge is, you know, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. Yeah. Buzzing this morning, the Maggie King of the Grill is on. It's happening on Saturday, May 4th at the Progress Park in St. Andrew. All right, I hope you're registered by now. The registration is still in process. Okay, all right, it's a day of fun, food, and entertainment. You can also win up to $5,000 in cash and prizes. Be a part of that. Saturday, May 4th, Susan Douglas and family, good morning. Eppin and the guys in the Coco, Banji and Squazim and Denson and... Yeah, all the guys, man. Good morning. Tito, good morning. Nice. Good, good, good. It's 17 minutes on to 7 o'clock. We've got the news coming up. Well, buzzing this morning, Dave Benjamin, the convict who's serving time for the murder of American tourist Jessica Kolka, he faces 39 years and nine months behind bars before he becomes eligible for parole. Or parole, parole. Yeah? Nice. But that's not nice. Both sides of the fence. 39 years, nine months, that's a lot of years to spend in rehabilitation. The family of Jessica is still in mourning, you know, so it's a sad, sad story. Also buzzing. Minister Tevin Andrew is making a plea for swift justice, not just for the late Esther Patterson, but for all children who may be suffering in silence. You know, that is an issue that we really have to start highlighting more. There are a number of children and adults too, who are suffering in silence due to molestation and sexual assault and... I don't know, man. I mean, sex is like, ooh, everything is that. What happened to you all hormones? Huh? Be like me, man. <laughs> Nice. Good. Want to say good morning to the Mac Meals out there in uh, Mount Agnes. Uh, good morning. Good morning. The guys in the sea wet. Good morning. The tall man that drives PAJ810. How are you doing, Papi? You good? Nice. He say he's a good Alphos player. I'm yet to see that. Esther family out there. Good morning. Red Bull and the guys up there. Morning. Appreciate morning. Now, encouragement for young lawyers to embrace criminal law practice. That comes amidst concern over the diminishing presence of legal professionals in the criminal law over the years. Yeah, criminal law seems not to be as lucrative as corporate law and so forth. But you know it is. Um, folks, that's it. That's uh, Those are the stories that are buzzing really this morning, you know. Um, yeah, those are the buzzing stories. We are heading into the AM edition of News, Sports, and the Weather. Stay tuned, those of you who are on the television platform. We've got a rebroadcast of last evening's television news. Before I run off, saying good morning to Edmund Gordon. He says, good morning, innocent, bless up Friday. Jasmine Dewati Dashan, good morning, everyone. Lovely day, all the way from Guyana. Sylvina is saying good morning. You just win. <laughs> Lucky you. Gracelyn Rubin, good morning from New York. 
Dan Kumari Singh. Good morning to all from Guyana. Wow, we have some Guyanese in the house this morning, boy. That good, that good, that good. I hope that EC with Venezuela again resolved amicably, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, good morning. Good morning to the bishop of the in um in that's Latand, right? Yeah, gentleman from Grenlick and your dear wife. Good morning to you all. I ain't forget all you this morning. Okay? Good, nice. Folks, it's time for us to do the AM edition. See you on the flip side of seven with the conversation. For joining us, Grenada is poised to receive additional assistance from Cuba under fresh agreements set to be signed in Havana this week, as Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell embarks on his first official visit to that nation. We get more in this report. Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell heads a powerful delegation that includes four of his senior ministers and is set to sign nine memoranda of understanding, including upgraded agreements in health and education. Memoranda covering cooperation in agriculture and fisheries, climate resilience, infrastructural development, culture and creative cooperation, tourism and sports will also be inked. It is the first official visit to Havana by a Grenadian leader in a decade. Prime Minister Mitchell, who has been there before for other engagements, will officially meet with Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canal, as well as Prime Minister Manuela Mororo Cruz. The delegation will also meet with Grenadian students studying in Cuba. The visit comes on the 45th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between St. George's and Havana. Except for a brief period after the U.S. intervention in 1983, the two Caribbean countries have enjoyed excellent relations. Grenada's international airport was built mainly with Cuban assistance, and hundreds of professionals now serving in the country have benefited from Cuban scholarships. Grenada's international airport was built mainly with Cuban assistance, and hundreds of professionals now serving in the country have benefited from Cuban scholarships. The Grenada delegation left for Havana today and will return home on Sunday. Included are Foreign Affairs Minister Joseph Andel, Health Minister Philip Telesford, Economic Affairs Minister Lennox Andrews, and Education Minister David Andrew. Minister for Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation, Andy Williams, has been appointed to serve as Prime Minister in the absence of Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell. Cherry and Blackman, Stephen, GBN News. Well, government has begun looking at ways of addressing coastal erosion in some areas in St. Patrick, starting with an environmental and social impact assessment, which is underway. The rest of the details in this report. Coastal erosion triggered by environmental and natural occurrences have resulted in extreme damage to archaeological sites at Satyrs Bay, as well as damage to homes and businesses in the area over the years.
years. In an attempt to address it, the previous administration had sought to mitigate the impacts by constructing what is known as the Sateras Brickwater Project, which was successful to an extent in protecting the lower Sateras area. However, communities such as Mount Rodney and Mount Craven were badly battered, resulting in the loss of homes, businesses, and overall livelihoods. On Tuesday evening, Parliamentary Representative for St. Patrick West, Joseph Andal, hosted a meeting with the affected residents to discuss plans to alleviate some of the challenges. We all would like to see things move rapidly. I don't think that there is anyone, whether it be a resident, someone who has lost his or her home, or whose home is under threat, or government wants to see any further delay in this project. As government, we are cognizant of the problems that people face in this area, and we recognize that there is a need for a solution to it. We also recognize that whatever solution we propose must be one that does not create a problem down the road because no one can dispute that the breakwater, that the breakwater has led to the protection of lower satires. The buildings that were being battered are now relatively safe and we have a nice beach minus the Green Lake. But that came with the loss of Copeland Bay, Mount Rodney, Mount Craven, and heading further down west to Pity and Sandoz area. So we want to make sure that we, as the saying goes, you measure twice, three times, and you cut once. During that consultation, government's proposed solution to address the coastal erosion in those areas, Mount Rodney and surroundings, were presented by the Chief Technical Officer in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Kevin Blash. It would consist of two main things. So along the coastline, we would have a revetment or a stone packing along the, the coastline. So the purpose of this revetment is to stop any further erosion along the coastline that is affecting the houses in the area. Um, subsequent to that, we would also construct some additional breakwaters that are parallel to the coastline. So in essence, the finished product would be similar to what we have on Batley, where you have the rocks that are parallel to the coastline. So that is from a visual perspective what it would look like. And these are just some more detailed drawings. These are also placed in the back as well. The existing coastline. And then from the area between, so this is the river that comes out just to the left of the um, jetty. So from this area, all the way back to that drain that empties out into Esplanade, right? Right, and it's connected to the malaria drain, that's what you call it, right? Right, so that, that is where the extent of the revetment would be. Because that is the area where we would have had the most um, degradation, and that is where a lot of the houses are at risk from being deteriorated. Right. Um, then directly opposite from the out in the water, we would have a combination of submerged and emerging breakwaters. The purpose of which is to further kill the wave energy as it tries to erode the bay. Candice Rampusad, an environmental scientist from Guyana, is responsible for conducting the environmental and social impact assessment. The aim of the ESIA, the first one, like I said, is to minimize the uh, any adverse environmental and social impact before they occur. And the second one, um, this is very important, is we want to integrate what you say to us in the decision 
decision making of the project, right, at the highest level. One of the things we're going to do is that we are recording all of this and every single word that you say during the question and answer period, we will record it. We will make a matrix that shows what were the comments and how those comments were taken on board into the project moving forward. We will return again to, with, to you. We'll have another stakeholder engagement where we will present our findings and we will show you that you said to us this and we have included it in this area. Christina John, GBN News. The Grenville bus terminus has become the center for debate as bus drivers operating the facility are calling on the relevant authorities to reconsider the decision to install speed bumps there. Nisha Peters tells us more. Bus operators have voiced their concerns, stating that while they acknowledge the need for speed control measures, the current speed bumps are ill-suited for the terminal's operations. They argue that the design and placement of the speed bumps is hinderous to both drivers and passengers. Saturday we walk Saturday, this is important here. Monday we come, Monday morning, problems. All these big, these homes and them, and these homes I'm doing plenty, plenty, plenty damage to our vehicle. We as bus owners, we're feeling it very, very bad, right? Because all we robbers, all we pushing everything under the vehicle. Even my pregnant woman on the bus, she will feel it when we climb in the home. It's very, very dangerous. In speaking with one of the bus driver, he stated that the speed bumps pose a significant challenge to maneuvering buses in and out of the terminal, leading to delays and potential safety hazards. This is no good. What, what is this bus coming up there? Oh, you have to twist. If they put on the rope or something, you ride it easier on it. But this is so hard that when you go up, you fall in hard. That is much of all below the bus. Normally, when the bus go up on this, and you fall, you fall down hard, everybody inside the bus feeling it. So when the bus fall and everybody comes down with the suspension, that must not. The drivers are urging authorities to replace the existing speed bumps with one that are more compatible with the terminal's layout and traffic flow. We're asking them if they could do something better than that for us because it's really forcing. They had the four set of homes, the rubber homes. This was okay. We didn't have a problem with it because when you climb up on it, you get a nice ride. But this too sharp, very, very, very sharp, and it's causing real, real damage. Despite repeated attempts by GBN's news desk to obtain clarification on the issue from the Granville Traffic Department, no response has been forthcoming. The situation at the Granville bus terminal underscores the importance of collaborative decision making and effective communication between stakeholders to address infrastructure concerns and ensure the efficient operation of public transportation systems. Nisha Peters, GBN News. The story to report a date has been set for the start of the murder trial in an almost six-year-old matter involving the shooting death of a St. George's businessman. Murder accused Raheem Kelshal was 24 years when he found himself at the center of the murder case. He has been on remand at His Majesty's prisons since his arrest in October 2018. He has been committed to stand trial for non-capital murder and robbery with violence in connection with the 2018 shooting death of Garfield Matthew of Belmont St. George. The accused has been represented by attorney at law, Jerry Edwin. Raheem Kelshaw is accused of the murder of a small businessman from the community of Belmont. He was known as Cut Up. That's Mr. Matthew. Uh, he was shot to death uh, approximately six years ago in circumstances that are really similar to another murder that occurred in Belmont some six months later. One knows that the community of Belmont has been stricken with a um, number of violent offenses, but uh, we're pleased to note that in recent months, Belmont, that was normally described by the residents there as a war zone, has really quieted down, and we could do with some peace and quiet. 
A bail application was filed last December in the High Court, but the request was denied and a trial date set for later this month. The attorney has voiced concern about the lengthy delay in the matter. There has been much concern by the court about delay. That is, it's not reasonable that a person should remain at the Richmond Hill Prison waiting for a trial for over five years. So we anticipate that the trial of Raheem Kelshaw will commence before Justice Innocent on the 22nd of April. That trial should take about three weeks. The trial of Raheem Kelshaw stands at as a testament to the pursuit of justice and the enduring quest for closure for those impacted by Matthew's untimely demise. Excitement is brewing as Grenada prepares to host a highly anticipated Youth Connect conference aimed at empowering young people to forge meaningful connections with God, others, and themselves. Gospel artist and pastor in training, Gidon Gilbert, explains the genesis of the Youth Connect conference. So the Youth Connect conference is something that is geared towards bringing hope, bringing positive um, influence, positive vibes to the youth of Grenada. Uh, we especially target the youth of Grenada, especially with the rise in crime and different negative things that has been in the airwaves. We want to bring something positive, something that can um, motivate and uplift our youths. And that's exactly what it's about. We have two days of events, one on the Friday night, one on the Saturday evening, that is geared towards the young people. All right, so in addition to the main conference events, members of the team will extend their outreach efforts to the community, visiting the Grand Bacolet Juvenile Rehabilitation and Treatment Center in St. Andrew. And then also we'll be doing some visitations, um, visiting some, some centers, visiting some homes, and the talent and the different abilities that God has blessed us with, we're gonna be using that to inspire the young people, to show them that they could become something positive in this life. And of course, because we are believers, we also wanna let them know that there is a better way. Um, we believe with God, all things are possible, and he's able to take care of the whole man. So we're also going to be bringing that kind of message to them as well. Set to take place from Friday to Sunday, the Pumrose in Pumrose, St. David's, the Esplanade and Esplanade Mall in St. George. The Youth Connect Grenada Conference seeks to steer youth away from negative influences and towards a path of spiritual growth and personal development. The Youth Connect Grenada Conference traces back to 2023 when the inaugural event was held in Trinidad and Tobago as part of the final internship project at the West Indies School of Theology. Drawing inspiration from the success of the Trinidad Seminar, the Grenadian delegation recognized the urgent need to address the pervasive influence of negative forces among the country's young people. Through a dynamic blend of music and the Word of God, the conference endeavors to instill positive values and empower young minds to navigate life's challenges with faith and resilience. Other news, the medicinal properties of soursop make it one of the most sought-after fruits in the world in an attempt to reap more benefits from the sector and better secure external markets. Government has taken steps towards enhancing sanitary and cytosanitary measures through capacity and market access for Grenadian, Grenadian soursop exports. The Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Forestry and Marine Resources is strengthening measures that would help the country maintain its current opportunity to export unirradiated up to the United States by enhancing sanitary and cytosanitary measures through capacity building and market access. An inception workshop was held at the National Stadium on Tuesday as Grenada launched the Standards and Trade Development Facility Project in collaboration with the Food and 
Southern Agriculture Organization. The three-year project would seek to help the ministry develop and implement an improved surveillance program for access to the export market, develop an anticipated action response program, and enhance diagnostic services and capacity. It's an intervention that is timely and must be embraced wholeheartedly. This has caused me to reflect on two things, the source of industry in Grenada and the psychosanitary capacity of the Ministry of Agriculture. I'm sure this project will address the gaps and strengthen local capacity for improved efficiency so that the two dreaded pests mentioned earlier are kept out of our, our, our industry. The International Plant Protection Convention forcefully highlighted in 2020-21 that 80% of our food consumed are from plants, yet an average of 40% of, of our food produced by plants are lost to pests and diseases. But before the end of this project, I'm sure that our farmers would be boosted as it relates to the reduction in the loss of crops to pests and diseases. That was Permanent Secretary Isaac Bagwan delivering remarks at the inception workshop attended by various stakeholders in the SARSAP export industry. The Food and Agriculture Organization's sub-regional coordinator, Dr. Renita Clark, explained how this project would allow government to deliver on the promise of agriculture sector transformation, particularly the SARSAP industry, to support activities to protect the SARSAP trade and the livelihoods of SARSAP farmers and exporters. The partnership does have a focus on building the capacities of the phytosanitary services within the country, but also the capacities of farmers to be managing their crop in the correct way, growing healthy trees. The project is not large in terms of funds. It should be large in terms of impact. The SCDF financial contribution is more than matched by government's own contribution. And I've been hearing about the programs of government to be supporting extension and outreach to farmers so that they can implement good practices. It's also matched by FAO's past and ongoing support to the soursop value chain. So all of the partners have skin in the game and no one more so than the government. I'm really looking forward to this project and many eyes will be on you. Make sure that at the end we can all see that it has been an impactful and exemplary work. The project will be implemented by the Food and Agricultural Organization's sub-regional office in Barbados and will complement the source of a value chain project implemented by the FAO. Relevant government authorities include the Pest Management Unit, the Bureau of Standards, Extension Departments, Agronomy Department, Customs, Port and Airport. Stakeholders include farmers, buyers, exporters, input suppliers and agro-processors. The workshop also featured remarks from Kathleen Polido from the Standards and Trade Development Facility who indicated that this project was approved last year by the working group and will help Grenada to become compliant with international standards and cytosanitary measures in international trade. It would also seek to develop and implement a sustainable traceable system for fresh SARSAP and certification systems for pest-free SARSAP. Christina John, GBN News. This story to report, the new Cannabis Working Committee announced this week has been given a six-month mandate to steer the government of Grenada on the way forward for the industry. The Cannabis Working Committee was appointed by the Cabinet at its March 25 meeting. According to Minister Andrew, the government recognizes the economic and social benefits of a well-regulated cannabis industry. Minister Andrew reiterated government's commitment to developing a responsible and evidence-based framework prioritizing public health and safety. The committee will play a key role in data gathering through consultations, make uh, policy and legislative recommendations, as well as advise the government of Grenada on the best industry model for adoption.
Minister Lennox Andrews talking there. The Working Cannabis Committee members include Dr. Sean Charles, Anselm Clowden, Josh Hector, psychologist, Tonya Alexander, cannabis expert, and ACP Vanny Cohen. Government is expecting to the recommendation from the Working Committee in six months. All right, let's watch this video to see what some people think of Grenada and Grenadians. Time for GBN I Saw. Stay with us. Tonight's GBN I Saw is a video posted on social media. Our citizen journalist submitted the video of a Kenyan asking people on the streets of Kenya what they know and think about Grenada and Grenadians. Let's see their hits and misses, if any. Do you know Granada? Oh, Granada. Yes, I know. I know. I know Granada. Is there anything you know about Granada? Nothing about Granada, but I know. I, I know the country. That country. But you don't know anything about I Granada. Never, I've never Google. So I do uh, research about that country. But you need to know about Granada. I, I do. Uh, do you know a country called Grenada? Grenada. Yeah. I've never heard of that country. It is in Caribbean island. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, I, I'm going to research more about it. So that means you don't know anything about Grenada? Nothing at all. Is it on an island uh, continent? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, then definitely that must be a... Uh, country where Jamaica comes from. Around, yeah, I might say, yes, Caribbean countries. Okay. You know a country called uh, Grenada? Yeah, I th I've heard of Grenada. Yeah, I, I have. Do you know a country called Grenada? I don't know it that well, but I've heard of it here and there. You have heard of, of it. Uh, if uh, What have you heard about Grenada? I know it's in the Caribbean. Mm. And then I've heard Grenada because I think there was a time I used to watch um, Olympics, and I think there was a Gran Grenadian participant participating in it. Yeah, but I don't know the country that well, like to know things about it. We thank our citizen journalist for that fun yet informative submission. Send us your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp at 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. On Saturday, May 4, there will be a shift on the island as the biggest grilling fest in Grenada moves to the Big Parish. The Maggie King of the Grill Competition is at Progress Park St. Andrew. Come taste the most sumptuous creations from the grill as top chefs and food enthusiasts showcase their culinary skills. Maggie King of the Grill is a festival like no other with live soca music, fun attractions, and games for the entire family. Then from 6 p.m., get a chance to win up to 5000 dollars cash and bingo interested vendors and grillers should call 456-3454 to register it's the maggie king of the grill competition at progress park st andrew gates open from 12 noon bring your appetite and stay tuned to this station for more details maggie king of the grill is made possible by bryden and miners hunts the official barbecue sauce of king of the grill rubis get rubis get going independence agency Agents for Swiss Products, Grenada Paper Product, Grenada Bottle and Company Limited, and Waggy Tea Rental and Sounds. Keeping up with the kids' growth spurts might mean it's time for a bigger fridge. Don't worry, at Quartz, we got you. Or maybe you're ready to turn your home entertainment up a notch. That means a larger TV and sound bar, we got you. Excited about making your new home feel more like you? We've got you. Need a better mattress for more restful sleep? We've got the size and comfort that's right for you. So shop today and pay later. Whatever you need, we've got you. Courts, bringing value home. Good morning once again and welcome to the conversation this morning and uh, right off the bat uh, someone one of my whatsapp contributors has brought something to uh, the fore this morning and it says I saw a video of him yesterday of a man working at SGU beating a mentally unstable boy and it's not looking good he always beating the boy and I find it's time we take a stand for mentally unstable persons in this country because too many times they are being taken advantage of. Something needs to be done, 
the authorities need to look into this well um, at least you make the you made a good step in you know bringing it out to the open and um, that's all it takes you know making the public know letting the authorities know it would help though if you can give some specifics as to if you can identify the boy or the person who is um, you know dishing out the abuse all right but at least you made a good stand in you know sensitizing us on it and it's important that we be vigilant where that is concerned it's so important that we look out for those who cannot look out for themselves all right so this morning um i do not have any guests in studio so it gives us an opportunity to sort of reflect on the week some of the buzzing topics for the week. Well, one of the main talks was the issue with um, Father Gerard Paul and the Catholic Church. That was very, a uh, very, very buzzing uh, story this week. Also, um, uh, what else? A number of issues were raised this week. I give you the opportunity now at 435 2041 where you can call in and let's, um, you know, let's. Do a reflection of the week. All right. Please, in, in, in doing so, make it as brief as possible. And uh, c clearly turn the volume of your radio or television down. And let's just be civil. Good morning, caller. Yeah, morning. And morning to your listeners and your viewers. Welcome. Yesterday, uh, one, of the, one of your callers called and uh, supported uh, a point I made at a different program the day before, and that to do with our indigen indigenous fauna and flora. And of course, he mentioned coconut and, and corn and that kind of thing, but I think we should give that more attention because, and he made some very brilliant points, so I want to commend him for p taking up on the, on the issue because we're in danger of facing establishing in the future if the world continue in the trajectory it has. Because as you said, what if there's a problem out there and it lasts a long time? What, what, how, how will we survive? Luckily, prior to independence, when we had the turmoil in Grenada, because we had some of the estates, uh, we could have, some of us survived. I remember being part of a, a group that left Pontinoy and walk to Douglas Estate in those days to get some basic uh, um, supplies. Not, uh, notwithstanding the, the, the distance to walk and walk back, but at least there was something. Now, it's not the same. So if we have a, a prolonged problem in the world, as we as it's brewing right now, what are we going to do? First of all, in terms of food supply, and also uh, um, if there is some, like right now, the phenomenon of the heat, which is affecting every single country. And as a, a professor said last year in the lecture, was, it is affecting every organ of the body. Just as it's affecting every country in the world, it's affecting every organ of the body, and that contributes to to unnecessary debt, hospitalization and debt. We really have to really take it seriously and some of the stupidity that we engage in and try, you know, trying to uh, dehumanize one another. Let us put those things aside and, and try to uh, evolve uh, humanity in a way that would consider future generation also. I sure that to think what generations going forward would have. And finally, um, it is said, based on the science and based on trends, that it will get hotter and hotter going forward. Last year was the hottest year ever, and it is said that the, the so far it is even hotter. So we have to really wake up and do something. Thank you for your Thank you, caller. Thank you very much. 
All right, folks, it's 20 minutes after 7 o'clock. And th there's something, I don't know if you're following the news, the international news, right? Um, uh, we, we heard that O.J. Simpson passed on yesterday at the age of 76, succumbing to cancer, prostate cancer. Um, also, there's, there's the threat from Iran to, um, to lash back at Israel for that um, bombing in Syria. And all of a sudden, you know, um, Joe Biden and the U.S. is back on side with Israel. This is... Good morning, caller. Morning. Hi. Could you turn the volume down, please? That down. Okay. I, my concern is, uh, first, is I want to belong as a threat for this thing. Is this thing about the gay, um, gay, lesbian, right? That is wrong. How because could, I can how, how understand. Could, how could the right be wrong? <laughs> no, well, what I'm saying is, I can understand eh, that you're talking about man, 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 woman, man, woman. And as any question, whether you're Muslim, Catholic, Anglican, Presbyterian, whatever religious body you belongs to, God never, God give Adam an Eve, a lady. So how come gay priests must bless same gay couple, whether two girl, two men or two women, as, as a unit? That that be, that, 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 that is um, against God's commandment. And you have other people in the same Catholic church kicking against, kicking, supporting that. Okay. That is wrong. So what? And if Grenadians didn't wake up to the reality, you remember the Bible say, as in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall we the son of the common man be, and look at what's going on today, even worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's just... It's a so what do, you pro what do you propose we do? Ban it. But we, ain't have, we don't have same-sex union or marriage in Grenada? But you know what the LBG... You group want to push, you want to push for our right. Do you think that would ever happen in Grenada? We anything is unpredictable in Grenada, we <laughs> with a trend that time now. And with with with, with um, Iran. Iran what Iran getting what coming on to them, you know, it's not it's not America, you know. Tidings of the north shall worry them. The final resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire, the seventh and final when you see Germany come down. The king of the north. They take it. Egypt will escape. Libya will escape. Ethiopia will escape. It is prophesied to happen in the Bible. Okay. All right. oh, okay. You enjoy your day, your human Pritch, brother. Preach it, brother. <laughs> Oh my goodness, nothing like a good laugh on a Friday morning. It's 23 minutes after 7 o'clock. Um, you know, amidst the laughter, but things are getting serious. And I, you know, sometimes I, I really, really wonder. I really, really wonder. All right, let's 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 go let's go back to the phone line. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to Mr. Anderson. Good morning. Blessing Friday morning. How are you? Morning. How are you do? Well, I'm okay. I'm fine now. All right, talk to me. You will have a little thing to speak about. No, don't get crazy, don't get mad. Now, um, we have the church, like the Catholic church, all different churches. Like, we have Harvey's, we have Naaman, like, collection in the church. All, we have that they pass with the collection basket or the collection of and collect money. So, I want to know where this Catholic, where the church have this bank and where the, that they bank in all this money. You want to know where they bank in the money? Yeah, well, I want to know where this money is banking and where the church bank is after they collect all this money from the church, where that they put it and which use is going to. I'm not finished as yet, but I'll just give you, you know, to give me an answer. Okay. All right. But, but what I'm saying now, me and a host was reasoning this week on his program. He told me that the money was like from the church, like they take, like they pay in, the electricity bill, they pay in the water bill, and they pay in whatever bills. But this money don't supposed to pay the priest and the bill like the the them churches and the bills. You can remember, Mr. Anderson, they are working for the money. Let this money come from the pocket and do all the all the paying off of the bills. You know, let it pay the bills for the service. So I asked him, okay, well, he didn't mention like like helping the homes or the hospital 
all the monkey mental place, you know, but it's all I talk about is the church and them that they using the money to pay off all the bills and that don't supposed to be happening. And if and God tell you that it's an offering and if they don't use it the right way that it that they will be getting punishment. Okay. So I hope that they will be using the right way and don't pay the bills and look up on the schools, every school, every monkey hospital, every poor people and them with this um, collection, this harvest money and whatsoever money that the collect. Because even, even tell me that the that the harvest they had in River Sally last week, when they like the harvest, like they use the money and they buy food and they feed the people. Have okay. a good morning. All right, Coltier, man. Have a good one. All right, yeah, have a good one. Very, very, very good answer for me when I hang up my phone. All right, good. Nice. Okay. All right. Um. <laughs> Let's go back to the telephone line. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Mr. Joseph. Greetings. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Pretty nice morning, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hear this, Mr. Joseph. Ah, oh, culture man, hear this. You ever heard or have you ever heard of the Bank of the Vatican? Smallest country in the world wasting a bigger one with the biggest bank in the world. In other words, the hugest sum of assets in the world, the Bank of the Vatican, no other word, that is the base of Roman Catholicism. That is where the money going. <laughs> Secondly, Mr. Joseph, I heard you comment this morning a while ago about an observation made by a caller. I would like to encourage this caller because I, I cannot tell if it is true or not. Relative to an adult abusing a child with known to, to be or suffering with mental disability or disorder. Please get your information to the Ministry of Mental Illness, how you call it again, Wellness and Ecclesiastic Affairs. Ecclesiastic Affairs. Send the video to that ministry. But it spells out something else, Mr. Joseph. The deficiency, the abuse that people with disabilities in this year country continue to suffer because the colonial state of Grenada refuses to obey the United Nations instructions as per the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. That is why, or one of the reasons why, because people do things and they get away with it. They abuse people with disabilities, they disrespect them, they treat them like the short word for excrement, and they enjoy themselves while they bask under the glory of the patronage of the so-called Governor General and the King. I know they don't like to hear that, but that's the doggone truth, Mr. Joseph. A comment on what's about to happen, we do not know, and the Yankee has admitted it, that it is not a matter of if, but when. Iran shall fire back upon Israel for the abuse. You see, Mr. Joseph, that is the purpose of the hegemonic designs of Zionism, to take over the world, create instability, Produce more weapons, make real money while the remainder of the world catch the royal beep. So it's coming. Now what would that cause? We all know in the 1970s of the instability in the Middle East, what it caused that relates to the price of fuel. We talk about petroleum-based products and so on. So it's what is coming. A previous caller, Mr. Antoine, spoke of the possibility of even food imports and what we create for us. These are the things we have to look at. Why I encourage our people to concentrate seriously on agriculture and the production of more food and even the plant food that we can store and conserve. The future seeks, seems very bleak. Finally, Mr. Joseph, just a bit of grammatical pedantry. I'll try to touch one every time I talk. A monarch song is a single vowel sound. The letter E may produce the sound 
e， 来写 he， she， b。The double e also can produce that song. E a now e a is a com and double e combination of two vowels, but they produce a mono song, which is a single song. There's a difference between e and a. Let's take a take a look at these two words: live and leave. Not the mono song produced by e a. Look at the word receive. Look at the word heat versus hit. I urge you, Mr. Joseph. The only way I can do it now is because you refuse to come and sit with me in my porch. Let me give you some orientation toward the pronunciation. I do hope you will learn something for it. Pay attention to what is known as the phonetic alphabet in the English language, so that you can enhance your reading. No other way to do it. But do have a nice day. I repeat, it is not for the purpose of discrediting you, but I want you to enhance your capacity as you speak on radio because you're speaking to the world. Thank. Thank you very much for what it's worth, sir. Thank you very much, Citizen Rolo. Have yourself a great day and a wonderful weekend. Have a good one. All right, folks. It's 28 minutes on to eight o'clock. We take a commercial break. We'll be back after these messages. Don't you go anywhere. <music> Are you looking for a reliable, affordable, and customer-friendly pharmacy? Look no further than Hills and Valley Pharmacy, the nation's leading healthcare products and services provider. We are committed to serving you at convenient locations. Find an extensive and affordable selection of prescription and over-the-counter drugs and medical supplies at Church Street, Hillsboro, Caracou, Jubilee Street, Grenville, St. Andrew, near the bus terminal, and Halifax and Grenville Street, St. George. Our committed team is always available to offer valuable assistance for managing your health and wellness. Discover the additional benefits of our wholesale distribution on Halifax Street and our Medgar Center on Grenville Street, where we provide in-house physiotherapy, massage therapy, doctor consultations, and eye care services. Our commitment is to satisfy all your health care needs, including competitive prices, loyalty rewards, and special discounts for seniors. Contact us at 435-6904 and WhatsApp 535-4734. Choose Hills and Valley Pharmacy. Remember, your health is our business. From the fertile heart of Grenada to the far reaches of the globe, Ram Supermarket brings together the best of both worlds. Savor the freshest locally sourced produce from our trusted Grenadian farmers and explore a curated selection of top quality international favorites. Experience a shopping journey where warmth meets a world of flavors and affordability meets premium quality. At Rams, we welcome everyone to discover the joy of global and local culinary delights. Nestled in Sugar Mill Grand Anse, we are open all week to offer you a taste of home and beyond. Rams Supermarket, where our family, community, and the world come together. We are the good food people. For decades, we are the number one and largest electrical supplier. Hi, welcome to Sunny Electrical. How may I help? We offer electrical wiring accessories, tools, and appliances for all residential, commercial, and industrial applications, which is what we are known for. And we expanded our products with new innovative ways to modernize your home. New homeowners will be captivated in our lighting showrooms. Some of pendant lights here, these are very multifunctional because they can work for kitchens, living rooms, bedrooms. We have a wide selection of lighting, ranging from indoor to outdoor and solar. We are also available for site visit services to assist you with selecting the perfect light for your forever home. 
We are located at Dusty Highway in Grand Island, St. George. Sudden Electrical, best value, expert advice, quality products. We hope to see you soon. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. Are you a VIP? Have you taken the necessary steps to safeguard your child's health? Let's get it right. Get your child on their vaccination schedule. Our national protection and coverage is our national priority. Our actions will impact Grenada's health and wellness. Let's make childhood immunization and vaccination number one. I am Senator Jonathan Lacroix, and I am a VIP champion. Let's make all our children VIPs, vaccinated, immunized, and protected. Let's all be VIP champions. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Religious Affairs. Be a VIP childhood vaccination and immunization campaign in collaboration with UNICEF and the Pan American Health Organization. In honor of the Grenada 50th Independence, the Royal Grenada Police Force Band presents the second annual Mother's Night Out. Mother's Night Out. The concerts all going down on Sunday, May 12th from 5 p.m. at the Grenada Trade Center. Featuring live from TNT. It's crazy. It's time to come. America will have a black president. John King. Amen. June Lodge, together with the Hitman Inspector, Valine Ned, Samantha Dixon, Alex Philip, Shane, Innocent, General PP, Kareem, Alexis, Ron Barry, the African Man, and much more. Dress code elegance. It's Mother's Night Out, the Grenada Trade Center, from 5 p.m. on Sunday, May 12. Lots of giveaways and prizes to be won. Champagne and roses on entry. You don't want to miss this amazing experience for mothers. Your tickets only $70 and are available from Kittens Pharmacy in Grand Dance and Grenville, Grenadian Optical, the Police Band House, Police Canteen. Make this a date for mothers. All right, welcome back. Welcome back, one and all, to the conversation this morning. You know the digits, so 435-2041. And let's just take some of our comments via our uh, Facebook page. Uh, caller, don't worry your head about the Catholic Church and their money because it feeds, shelters, educate, and put clothes on your children back and takes care of its responsibility. I can speak for my church. You don't see no priests drive million dollar uh, vehicle and build billion dollars house. We know where our monies go. All right. Uh, okay. Let's go to the telephone line. Um, good morning, caller. Good morning, Gordon. Hi. Um, just a short contribution, right? Please. But um, Culture Man and Mr. Rolo. Um, well, for Culture Man, he not there with him because half of the time he has no idea of what he's talking about. I heard him brought up the same the same point he, he thought he made this morning. He brought it up on one of the radio stations yesterday, and I'm sure the person clarified it to him, right, for him. But Mr. Rolo... I, I'm a little bit disappointed with him this morning concerning the, the contributions by the church and where it goes to. I am speaking because I'm directly involved, in particular with the Catholic Church and Finance Committees, and I've been, respond, I've been on those committees for years and years and years, right? And um, what he says has no truth in it at all has no truth. There's no money that goes to what, how we describe the Vatican or whatever. Actually, a lot of the projects we have, done, have in this country are funded by overseas Catholic organizations. Right? I, I speak, I say what I know. Okay? okay. But Mr. Rolo, um, he, he talks um, with a level of... Um, Oh, I know it all. There are lots of things that he knows that, like he gave you a little hint this morning. It's a pity, you know, he's he's so well learned. I admire that about him, right? But 
he should use it a little better, you know. I'm sure, in spite of his disability, he can ask for a, a, a lift somewhere and goes to go to some of the schools that's close to him and, and volunteer 20 or 25 minutes with them and impart some of this valuable information, like what he was telling you this morning. They don't teach that in schools anymore. And it would be very, very good if he can do that. What he, but the, the whole point I'm trying to make is about this this thing and the Catholic. There's no truth in it. There's no truth, absolute, absolutely no truth. Okay. Right? Thank the collection you. and all the fundraisers. They are used internally because there's a lot of commitments. You have Catholic schools. You, you have a lot. You feed the poor. You, I can't even begin to name it. And sometimes the banks are at the, the, the churches are at the mercies of the, the, the overdrafts. Okay. Right? So Mr. Rollo must be very careful with okay. the things that he say. You talk about what you know, but what you don't know, leave it aside for someone else to pick it up. I'm very disappointed in him this morning. Okay. Very, very disappointed. Thank you very I much, I listen caller. to him every morning, and I'm very disappointed. Okay. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you, Kola. Don't raise your pressure too high on this. It's uh, 19 minutes on to the uh, of 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Let's take uh, uh, this caller via our WhatsApp platform and say, good morning, caller. Caller, good morning. Mr. Hassan, good morning. Morning, how you do? Hello. I've been trying for the whole weekend. Hmm, okay. But Wow, your connection is really bad. Okay, you need to you need to try again. Let's go back to the telephone line. Good morning, caller. Yeah, I've been trying for the longest time. Morning. Just two things quickly. You hear me correctly? Yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah, because there's a noise on the thing. Yesterday, some from one raised the issue, which is important, that of all, of all these foreigners, all these people coming in and taking Grenadian jobs at the top. But I just want them to know, I, to the best of my knowledge. The, all the heads of government know, I think, sign or will be signing because some in going to sign that they're going to be have full free movement of people. So which means people are going to be able to, people are going to come in, in your country and take your jobs and you will go in somebody else's country to be able to take the job because I think that is their agreement in accordance with the Caribbean single market and economy, something to that effect, where a lot of the other countries kind of are not signing on to the, the final document. I think a final document was supposed to be on the 21st of March, but a lot of um, companies, a lot, a lot of territories, a lot of Caribbean islands who are supposed to be part of the CSME say, listen to me, no, I'm not part of it, and I'm not sure if Grenada signed on, so which means my friend, a lot of people will be coming and take the top jobs, and we know are entitled to go to their country. So you see the thing about it, we can't stop it. It's the politicians that make a mess of things, the politicians that enable these things, because I'm, I'm wondering, in a sense, when people come in, what would, what would happen? Would their children be able to go to our schools? Are they able to, to, have, um, to be, have access to our health services? And these are the things that our politician needs to tell us, because we might have people overrunning our society. I don't know about if Haiti is part of it. I don't know what is going happen suppose a whole Asian start to come inside here could we say because they are part of the single market we can't we can't um, accommodate them I don't know it's these politicians that are making things hard for us so okay. I just was trying to tell him that at, soon from now they will flood our markets and we could go over there and finally this issue about gay and so on what not I respect the other the guys um, opinion and I'm not bashing anybody but I think in my deliberate judgment is that people could love who they want People could have sex who they want, they could marry who they want, because who am I? We can't judge anybody like, like, like that. You see, we, people must look at people of who they are, and really, who somebody have sex with or they married, it's not really my business. You know, so I think we should try, we're not upholding anything, but I, okay. um, I think we should be a little bit more easy on people and respect that people have the right to love who they want, okay. or who marry to who they want, or who they say, all these are private matters, and please, people, I'm not accusing everybody, don't discriminate against these people because, after all, they are our brothers and sisters, and they're, they're entitled to love who they want, and they're part of the society. So we shouldn't go down and be too hard on them, but respect their wishes of who to love, 
who to marry and who to have sex with. Okay. Don't discriminate against them because you and I, these are private decisions, these are personal decisions, and don't, don't go there, but try okay. and accept the people, love them for who they are, they are part of the society, and they should be treated equally and with uh, and respect. Okay. Thank you, my Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go to a WhatsApp platform now. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Mr. Joseph. And how are you this morning? I am alive and thankful. How are you? Well, quite fine for the time. God bless you. Mr. Joseph, yesterday, I know the time was short. When I touched now, sir, there was a rebuttal from a gentleman and claiming that now I said do a lot of investment. Um, I'm not trying to be hard on now I said, in any way. But Mr. Joseph, there are some simple things we can look at this in the country and we now as I have failed. First, there is an axiom that all water belongs to Nawasa. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. Right. I know you from the St. Andrews area. When the people of Guapu wanted proper water, Nawasa failed to invest. The people went, they built a little dam, their own lines and everything so they could supply themselves with water. You know what Nawasa turned around and do to the people of Guapu? When they see the construction, Nawasa go in, maybe put larger lines, and then they take over the dam and then they charge the people of Guapu. Nawasa also, the way a years gone by, I know you live in the Castine area, you saw some instrument on the Castine Ridge uh -huh, that was yes. to measure the flow of water to see if it's possible they can do hydro production for electricity. Nawasa turned the back on that. Fail to make the investment. No, we're talking climate change and all things. What you mentioned about Iran and war and somebody say about oil will go. If we're serious about climate change in this country, climate change only goes for cutting down trees and different things like that. Now, as I can invest into the production, if they want uh, to get out with Grand Lake, in hydro, a simple case you could look at you from Tivoli. Look at the River Antoine Estate in the production of the sugar cane. They channel the water to a canal right down. Get that water to fall on the um on the wheel. wheel yeah. to grind the right to grind the sugar cane. That same fly wheel, if you put an alternator onto it. You can produce electricity based on the level of flow of water and could have supplied the entire La Poetry Tivoli, wherever area. There are loads of water in Grenada. Now, are you telling me that Nawasa cannot collaborate together with the other utilities, produce hydro, and we can have a lot of things being changed? Just go in St. Vincent. St. Vincent have huge rivers as Canada and those places, but they produce hydro. They use the water and they produce it. So we talking climate change and all different things. Yet for all, thousands of barrels of oil will be imported, used into Queen's Park, destroy the ozone layer. The people of Dabo and the surrounding can be affected and we have water that you can make investment where we don't, in case of war, we don't have to depend on how much barrels of fuel. So when I'm talking, and I'm talking about Nawasa and the poor underutilization in using the resources to produce quality water and give the people with all the water we have here, I'm not guessing things, and I'm still waiting and Ms. Jamila Lewis come and explain this bill and somebody in Nawasa tell us when last Nawasa bill a dam, you might tell a bill storage tank. When last Nawasa invested in some dam, 
Okay. I want to hear those things. All right. I'll so try. I'll try. Here, here, what I'll do. I'll, 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 I'll try my best to get someone from now as management team or the PR team to come on a program next week and let's have some clarification. All right. Yes, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Just for God you. Just you. for you. Anything for you, man. Anything. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good weekend, okay? Thanks. Thanks. All God right. bless you. All right. God bless you, too. All right, folks. It's 10 minutes on to the hour uh, of uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, let's take our final commercial break. In the, Before we take that break, let's let's just accommodate that WhatsApp caller. Good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. Good morning Mr. Joseph. Hi, good morning. How are you? I would like to remind your listening audience and Grenadians that the government promised a card for the disabled, the handicapped, the elderly, right? Buses should not stop, should not stop just anywhere. But I want them to remind the government, the powers that be, the relevant authority, these cars are needed for disabled, elderly to be picked up at convenience. For the disabled and elderly only, they gave a card to these people to accommodate them have a blessed weekend you too my bro have a good one very very valid point there all right folks let's take a final commercial break in this program this segment and come back and do the wrap don't you go anywhere Mark your calendars, football fanatics. The GFA is turning 100 this year, and we're ready to celebrate. It's GFA's Legends Weekend, a three-day extravaganza, kicking off on Friday, May 3rd, and running all the way till Sunday, May 5th. Witness history in the making. The Caribbean taking on the world in a clash of legendary international footballers on Sunday, May 5th at the electrifying Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Get ready to roar with the crowd as iconic legends like Emmanuel Adebayo, El Hajj Diouf, Alex Song, Michael Essien, Luis El Matador Hernandez, Shaka Hislop, Asamoa Gayan, Ricardo Bibi Gardner, Russell Latapi, Shallery Joseph, Jason Roberts, Dexter Dabs, and a whole host of superstars light up the pitch. From breathtaking goals to unforgettable memories, GFA's Legends Weekend promises an epic celebration of football you won't want to miss. Keep your eyes peeled on GFA's social media for the full squad reveal. GFA's Legend Weekend. Weekend. Be there. On Saturday, May 4th, there will be a shift on the island as the biggest grilling fest in Grenada moves to the big parish. The Maggie King of the Grill Competition is at Progress Park St. Andrew. Come taste the most sumptuous creations from the grill as top chefs and food enthusiasts showcase their culinary skills. Maggie King of the Grill is a festival like no other with live soca music, fun attractions, and games for the entire family. Then from 6 p.m., get a chance to win up to 5000 dollars cash in bingo interested vendors and grillers should call 456-3454 to register it's the maggie king of the grill competition at progress park st andrew gates open from 12 noon bring your appetite and stay tuned to this station for more details maggie king of the grill is made possible by bryden and miners hunts the official barbecue sauce of king of the grill rubis get rubis get going independence agent Agencies, agents for Swiss products, Grenada Paper Product, Grenada Bottle and Company Limited, and Waggy T Rental and Sounds. We see Mr. Winkai, then you have things like Manny Moss. Moss come back, you know? We have the low power there. Only push your push up. It is kind of like, like, like the same man, no, 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 no. it's just different name for the same kind of thing. And last but not least, I just want to say to all the men who saw me, call me, and ask for pizza cake. I'm baking this weekend. <laughs> Join us Fridays at 8 on GBN Television, K105 FM, GBN's Facebook page, and the YouTube channel for We Culture. All right, welcome back, viewers, to the final six minutes of the program. Let's head straight to the telephone line. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Innocent. Hi, good morning. And welcome. Uh, to viewers and listeners. I'm, I'm somewhat disappointed in you this morning. Um, there was, I, I remember hearing a gentleman spoke about expatriate coming into Grenada and taking up the big jobs and all of those things. And then, but I don't think that comment was relating to our Caribbean region, meaning CARICOM. 
and there is a difference. Um, we have signed on to that CARICOM agreement long before, and I don't think the argument was that people who is within the CARICOM region was in that argument. Actually, I reinforced the point that a gentleman made. Um, so I thought this morning you should have corrected Anne-Marie with this erroneous um, calculation she made about people coming in. There's nothing wrong in someone coming from Trinidad or Barbados or Jamaica, so long as there isn't anybody here who is so qualified and they have been through an interview process and that person gets a job. There's nothing wrong with that. We can go in other countries and do the same thing. But we are talking about people coming from outside of our, the CARICOM region and so benefiting. They are actually placed. They don't go through any qualification process or, or interview. They're just placed in those positions. And I think that is what the argument was all about. So I was somewhat disappointed that you didn't correct it this morning. So that is why I'm calling. Thank you and have a good morning. Have a good weekend, Papi. All right? All right. Yeah. Good, nice. I disappoint somebody this morning, boy. Wow. Hey, what? Good morning, JJ and Sylvie and uh, Daphne and Nai Nai. Morning, morning. All right, let's uh, take this caller via our WhatsApp platform. Good morning, caller. Yes, brother. I hope you're hearing me better now. A whole lot better. Are you? Yes, I am. Right. I've been trying desperately to get onto that program for about for the whole week. Okay. And I hope my name gets cleared up because I was accused of, of, about about ten days at least by now on this radio station on the later program to the point at nine o'clock to ten. Accused of what? Accused of having not been a part of the organization called Friends of the Earth. Because at, the, at that morning, someone called and talked about um, environmental issues. And I called afterwards, and I made mention saying that I am a friend of the Earth. And I also said that I used to be a part of the Friend of the Earth organization. The guy who might be the president of the organization, who I knew who was for a while, call afterwards and say to people that I was never a part of the organization. I end up getting through to the program a few days after and ask two questions for him to answer and up to this day. Every day he's on the radio and I've never heard him um, answer to it. One, if he knows me. And two, how he come to know me. And the answer is, um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, he knows me for one. And two, he knows me because we were part of the same organization called Friends of the Earth. That's the only time that guy come to know me. Okay, let me ask you this. Have we been on... on, on... Could I ask you a question? Go ahead. Now, how, Go ahead. how significant and important is it for Grenada and the rest of the world to know who knows who and who was part of what? How significant is that? So listen, because I was accused of being a liar that I was never part of the Friends of the Earth organization. So uh, is he being the president, he could simply say to people, well, I never know that guy. We, he was never a part of the Friends of the Earth. Because if he, know, he knows me, he would only have, only have known me. That's the point I'm making. Because okay. my reputation here goes out to people as a, one who lies. The, the, or an imposter. What, was your name or called? Or maybe too. Was your name called? Hello, he, he, he respond and rebut to a statement I made. Yeah, but was and your he, name he called? said that this guy was never a friend, part of the friend of the earth. No, but it was clear, clear very clear based on the program that, that day. Yeah, but I don't anyway, even, I don't even know your name. Argument. No, I'm not arguing. I'm just, I'm just trying to get to the, to the bottom of this. I don't know, I don't know your yeah, name. Yeah, but this is what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. If, if, if it, if it was, a, if it was a, a um, the other, the, well, if it was to the point at nine o'clock, the, the, um, the host would have clearly understood what I said. But I'm uh -huh. telling you, I explain to you what happened. Okay. But another thing, relative to that issue that that turned up in River Sally, and I, I from River Sally, uh -huh. um, you know me, innocent. Okay. Quite an extent. All right. We used to talk a lot, a lot at one time. Okay. But we only met once. We okay. only met once, okay. you and I. Okay. But we used to talk a lot. Okay. You had to run the top. I had to join the BBC, right? Yes, I know. I'm from River Sally. Uh -huh. And about three years ago, two workers from um, GBN came up to River Sally to do an interview with me and John Tricks, as uh -huh. you might know, John Tricks too. And uh -huh. um, 
there was an incident around that time. Okay, Carla, really Carla, I'm sorry, place. Carla, I'm sorry, but it's eight o'clock. I have to. We have to leave that conversation for another time. Yeah, I have to join the BBC. Have a no good worries. day. All right. Have a great weekend, folks. Thank you for being part of the program this morning, and um, you know, have a great weekend. I love you. Bye bye. I've got to go. We've got to join the BBC. It's eight o'clock. We'll also hear why so many.